As army units moved to take over government buildings in the capital, however, it became clear that Hitler had in fact survived. Stauffenberg, handicapped by the fact that he'd lost an arm and several fingers of his, uh, of, of, uh, his other hand in battle and dis dis disturbed by an orderly while priming the bombs, had only managed to set the explosives with his one useful hand before being forced to pack his briefcase. So he'd only set ha primed half the explosives, uh, the other half uh, uh, was not primed, and he uh, was uh, obliged to give it, uh, give the other half away to uh, uh, another of his, uh, one of his helpers who disposed of it um, uh, later on. So only half the quantity was actually set off in the hut. Hitler was standing on the other side of a wooden table, very heavy table, when the bomb went off. The blast blew out the windows and destroyed the walls of the flimsy hut, thus dis dissipating its force. If it had been a concrete bunker, the results had been very different. This is the damage caused, nonetheless. Um, and, uh, of course, uh, some people in the, in the hut were indeed killed. The conspirators had also failed to cut telephone links with, uh, from, uh, to Berlin with Rastenberg, uh, and Hitler, Himmler, and Goebbels moved quickly to tell wavering army commanders in the capital, as well as in Paris and Vienna, where Operation Valkyrie was also getting underway, <coughs> that the leader was still alive. Indeed, Hitler himself came onto the radio to reassure the public that the plot to kill him had failed. And it now became clear that the conspirators had only managed to secure the support of a relatively small number of army officers. The others considered their personal oath of allegiance to Hitler binding, or were afraid that a stab in the back of the sort they all believed had destroyed Germany's fortunes in the First World War would only be counterproductive. Hitler's charismatic authority was certainly fading, but when backed by Goering, Goebbels, and Himmler, it was enough to persuade a number of senior officers to withdraw their support or move against the conspirators. Stauffenberg and some of the principal resistors were arrested at army headquarters in Berlin and shot. Others committed suicide. And up to 5,000 people, including the families of some of the key figures, were arrested on Himmler's orders. And a series of show trials followed his girdler uh, being brought to, to trial, of which many of the accused were showered with verbal abuse by the judge, the Nazi lawyer, president of the People's Court, Roland Freisler. They behaved with calm dignity, they were denied any opportunity to put their views to the court, but a few managed to get a word in edgeways amidst all the diatribes. When Freisler told one of them he'd shortly roast in hell, the defendant bowed and re responded swiftly, I look forward to your own imminent arrival there, Your Honor. Altogether, about a thousand people died by execution, shooting, or, or suicide. The main surviving conspirators were hanged with especially thin rope to ensure they'd die of slow strangulation. Ordered by Hitler, this deliberately humiliating, painful execution was filmed for him to gloat over in late night sessions in his apartment. Well before the attempt, the more clear-headed conspirators had realized that their plan would not rescue Germany. It was, became a moral gesture that would go some way towards rescuing Germany's honor. Had they succeeded, the most likely result would have been, I think, a civil war between their supporters in the army and the rest of the armed forces backed by the SS and the party. This would have shortened the war, saved probably millions of lives, including German lives, and that surely was justification enough for the attempt.